President-elect Biden arrives in D.C. ahead of his swearing in, the security, the ceremony, and the final message from President Trump. And chilling threats, orders to execute Democrats, calling for violence at the inauguration, the hateful post that landed a Queens man behind bars. Also, vaccine fears, the dwindling doses in the city that could have vaccination clinics closing in just a matter of days. A lot to get to tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm Natalie Pascarella. And I'm Chuck Scarborough. It was a stirring ceremony less than an hour ago. On the eve of their inauguration, with a cold winter dust settling over the Lincoln Memorial reflecting pool behind them, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris paid their respects to the over 400,000 lives lost to the pandemic. In just 18 hours, President-elect Biden will become President Biden. The oath of office is scheduled for noon tomorrow. And with the final day of his presidency fading into its final hours, Donald Trump issued his farewell address this afternoon. I stand before you truly proud of what we have achieved together. We did what we came here to do. In a tweet, Vice President Mike Pence called the past four years the greatest honor of my life. We have live team coverage from Washington, D.C. of the preparations, including the massive security operation underway right now. And we kick things off with News Force Andrew Siff with a busy day already for the president-elect. Andrew? That's right, Chuck. Aides to the president-elect tell us that Joe Biden plans to deliver an inauguration address tomorrow between 30 and 40 minutes, focused on bringing the nation together. Joe Biden and his family arrived in Washington about 90 minutes ago. Then, after a short trip by motorcade to the Lincoln Memorial, Amazing grace. He and Kamala Harris attended a special ceremony for the 400,000 Americans lost to COVID-19. Though we may be physically separated, we, the American people, are united in spirit. Hours earlier, the president-elect fighting back tears as he thought about his late son, Bo. I only have one regret. He's not here because he should, we should be introducing him as president. Biden will take the oath tomorrow at noon at a U.S. Capitol protected by troops, including thousands from the National Guard, exactly two weeks after violent insurgents stormed the Capitol. The mob was fed lies. They were provoked by the president and other powerful people. For the newest members of Congress, the sight of military checkpoints on almost every route leading to the Capitol, a jarring reminder of the security stakes. Richie Torres of the Bronx will be here tomorrow. You're confident it'll be a safe and peaceful transfer of power? I can only hope. I know that there are friends and family members who have advised me not to come to the inauguration, fearing for my safety. Uh, but I feel it's important for elected officials like me to show that we will not be intimidated. Today also marked the final full day in office for Donald Trump, who for the first time in a video released late today alluded to leaving office. Now as I prepare to hand power over to a new administration at noon on Wednesday, I want you to know that the movement we started is only just beginning. And Donald Trump will not be attending the inauguration ceremony tomorrow. He plans to fly off to Florida sometime in the morning after a send-off ceremony. We're also told that Vice President Pence will not attend that farewell. We're live in Washington. Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. Andrew, thank you. A massive security presence on the ground and in the air. At the request of the Department of Homeland Security, the FAA is adding more restrictions to airspace above Washington, D.C. D.C.'s mayor urging residents to stay away from the Capitol, period. And federal officials say about a dozen members of the National Guard have been relieved of their inauguration duties after their vetting process. Some of it based on background checks and criminal history, others based on concerns raised by fellow Guard members. News 4 investigative reporters Sarah Wallace is also live in Washington to continue our team coverage with a look, Sarah, at securing this inauguration. Well, and Natalie, you can feel the intensity growing here. As of tomorrow, nearly 30,000 members of law enforcement will be here on the scene to protect not only the Capitol, but the entire downtown area from the violence that rocked the world two weeks ago.
National Guard troops on the move this evening. Caravans of supply trucks rumbling around the fenced off Capitol grounds, protected by razor wire. Federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies on patrol, with darkness falling, a heightened sense of alert for those now securing blocks and blocks of downtown D.C. Audrey Costar of Ohio made plans months ago to attend the inauguration and decided to come even with all the uncertainty. I mean, I paid for the hotel and I figured I would come. It wouldn't be as bad as what it is, but I guess I should have known how crazy it is. It's like, it's like a bad movie. You see, you know, the, the AKs or whatever they're carrying, and it's scary. Ahead of Wednesday's ceremony, federal investigators are vetting guard members challenged with protecting the event. At least a dozen police agencies are looking into whether officers took part in the Capitol insurrection. DC's mayor. When you have um, guards coming, guards, men and women coming from all over the country at this time, uh, I do think uh, that it is, is prudent uh, to make sure that that they are being vetted. Word this afternoon that nearly a dozen guard members have been relieved of their inaugural duties. Two reportedly for sending what's called inappropriate texts or messages. But the acting defense secretary says there is no intelligence indicating an insider threat. Senator Amy Klobuchar is on the Biden inauguration committee. The Biden team as well as the inaugural team will listen to the security experts every step of the way. What happened at the Capitol was atrocious. People literally staged an insurrection. That is not happening at the inauguration. Meantime, the FBI says it has gathered an astounding 195,000 digital photos and videos from the January 6th attack. Lawmakers still reeling from the images and video captured by a reporter for the New Yorker magazine. Appearing to show a mob hunting members of Congress. It was chilling uh, and it was personal. But we now know that our democracy is fragile and we all need to do everything we can to protect uh, our democratic institutions. So far, we have seen no sign of protesters. Law enforcement hoping that the show of force here acts as a deterrent to anyone who might think of attacking the Capitol again. Live from Washington, D.C., Sarah Wallace, News 4 New York.